Hi, hello there YouTube and welcome to a random review. I am Random Ross and today I review The Marvels. So this is uh, the 33rd installment of the in the MCU and is the third movie in its fifth phase and is a sequel to 2019's uh, Captain Marvel and it is written by Nia DaCosta, Megan McDonnell, Elisa uh, Karik, so all female writing and directed by Nia DaCosta as well um, and it stars of course Brie Larson, Tayana Paris, Emil, Aman, Eamon Veliana or something, you know, Miss Marvel, Zoe Ashton, Gary Lewis, um, Patrick Co. June, um, Zenodia uh, Shoroff, Man, uh, Mana Cab or something, uh, Sagar Sikshakao or something like that. And Samuel Jackson as Nick Fury. So as I've established already the genre and what it's a sequel to. So in this, after you know, after tying in after you know, one division where we see Monica develop and get her powers, and Ms. Marvel, where we see Camilla Camilla Khan become Miss Marvel, and that whole mid credit scene where we see her get teleported and then we're all she's all of a sudden replaced by Carol Danvers, Captain Marvel. Um, basically, there is an ongoing war still with the Kree, and uh, you know, Carol, you know, accidentally, Carol, Monica, and Emil accidentally trigger some cosmic energy, photon energy that causes them to switch places, and they switch around whenever their powers are activated. And of course, they're dealing with. Darbin, played by Zoe Ashton, and here's a fun fact: Zoe Ashton is actually the real-life wife of Tom Hiddleston, or fiance. But uh, yeah, you know, Loki's uh, you know other half in real life, and of course Loki is currently in you know um, Loki season two, which I have yet to review because I haven't finished it yet. <coughs> Anyways. Um, yeah, she's trying to save her world and is willing to, you know, destroy other worlds just to restore the Kree planet after we find out that Carol, who is given the nickname the Annihilator, destroyed the super intelligent computer and their planet is left, you know, failing. And of course, we get some funny moments in there, some alien cats again, like Goose and that. And we get some fun cameos in there, like from Tessa Thompson as Valkyrie. We get scrolls in there too. Yeah, so we get a lot of all uh, a, a lot of good, you know, space action sequences and what have you. And we get a great, you know, mid credit scene. There, I think there's there is only one mid credit scene in this, which I will not give anything away, cause, you know, uh, but. It is. I do enjoy that mid credit scene. That's probably one of the best bits about this film. I thought our three main leads, you know, all female leading cast, was brilliant, and I loved how it tied into the Disney Plus shows. Uh, I also liked, you know, Samuel Jackson back as Nick Fury after it. You know, he we see saw him earlier this year in Secret Invasion, uh, and I loved Brie Larson and you know all the others. They were just. You know, spot on, great cast, and some okay visuals. You know, a lot of CGI here and there. But of course, I do have my negatives. Now, the plot is was obviously predictable. The you know action, they like had no beginning or no end or no middle. They were just like felt like they were just put in there. There's one sequence where they're on a planet where everyone sings because that's their language, and that's just a cringe fest with you know but uh, I just thought this film was not that good I do like that it clocked in at 105 minutes because the last two installments Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania was just over two hours Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 was over 
two and a half hours but this one ran just under two hours which I actually liked I think this is the shortest one is it the shortest MCU film or at least the shortest in a while yeah I liked that it was short so it wasn't slow paced it, 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 you know, it, it did take its time getting there but yeah phase five has got off to a bit of a hit and miss rocky start you know like we started phase five this year in feb with ant-man and the wasp quantumania that wasn't that brilliant then we got guardians of the galaxy volume three but that was just brilliant you know spot on from there uh we got secret invasion which was all right i enjoyed but um loki season two i'm currently watching that and i'm loving it this one hmm Again, it's like sort of been up and down with quality, I think. Uh, and this is the last MCU thing we're going to get this year. Well, no, we got season two of What If and then uh, Echo in January. But when it's film wise, this is the last MCU movie we're going to get until the middle of 2024 with Deadpool 3. I'm actually looking forward to that and I hope they deliver. But yeah, I guess 33 films into a franchise you're gonna you know sort of you know, run out of steam uh, but I did like our cast and stuff and uh, you know like I say it was great that it was all led by women and written by women and stuff you know something that the MCU had lacked in their early phases um, but yeah um, that's all I've got to say, I think. So, ratings, I think I will give the Marvels... I'll, I'll give it a 3 out of 5. 3 out of 5 for the Marvels. So, there you go. There is my review on the Marvels. Have you seen it? Let me know what you think down below in the comments. If you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up and to share with your friends. And feel free to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and to hit that notification bell. I've been Random Ross and this has been... You random reviews. So until next time, I bid you all a goodbye.